Hello, good day. Welcome back to Gonna Run. This is Pocket Base Episode 6. And today I'm going to sh show you how to work with fields in your collections that are of type file. Again, Pocket Base comes with so much out of the box that handling files is one of them. So let's jump in. So the first thing I'm going to do is fire up my pocket base because I stopped it when we left off um, last week. And let's just go make sure that oh, we can access it. So let's reload and we'll log in. And there we go. All right. So if you remember, we have these items and there they are, you know, different prices and so on. But one of the things that's missing besides the price and the name and description and all that good stuff, users would want to see some pictures, you know, images of the item. And so we don't have that now. So let's go modify our items collection and let's add a new field and we'll call, say that the type is a file and we'll say, we'll just call it files. You know, we could call it images if we want. So, okay, all right, images. Um, notice that when you select um, file as your type, you can also have a field value that is single or multiple, which is basically a scalar value, one value, or an array as so you can have multiple um, values for this field. And we know that most e-commerce sites today, when they list an item, they might have many pictures of or images of that item or similar items, different colors, different angles, and so on, you know, the front, the back, this sort of thing. So yeah, we should totally do multiple. And let's see what kind of options we have here in terms of, um, you know, modifying or fine tuning or a type file type. And you can see we have allowed MIME types. So this has to do with what type of files do we want to upload, just text files, image files, PDFs. And you can see from here, there are many different types. And we said we we're going to be dealing with image. So I happen to know that a MIME type for, um, you know, for images is image slash whatever. And I'm going to say image slash PNG. We want to support that. And if I click on that, you notice how it adds it to the list. I'm going to say JPEG as the other one. And I'm going to say, let's say GIF or GIF. Some people say GIF. And so there we go. So those are the three um, image types. I don't want to support PDF or anything else. So I'm going to clear that search. All right. So what else do we have? thumbnail size again by default because pocket base is providing this feature for you it can generate and it will generate an um, thumbnail image which you're going to see how that's used later um, this is a good idea if you're building a ui instead of trying to download the full image which might be quite large let's say it's five megs you might instead prefer to download the much smaller thumbnail image which pocket base will generate for you and this is max select. We're not going to worry about that. And whether this should be non-empty or not. Yeah, we should probably say it out or item, each item should, must have an image, but uh, since we already have items without image, we're not gonna check this right um, just yet. Is it presentable? Um, this is just, should it, um, should Pocket Base try to show it in the admin UI? And it defaults to auto, and I'll show you that. So then I save it. So we already have items, so we need to update this, right? We're not creating items right now, we're talking about updating. But remember, for create and update, it's gonna be the same, it's gonna be quite similar. If we go back into here and go to our API rules, we'll see that this is currently set to admin only. So for now, since we're going to update the image, we'll unlock it for anyone. And so now it's all unlocked. So let's see what we need to do next. So if we go to our editor, you'll see I have a few files. So let me start with this file first. This you're going to find in the repository. So if you pause this video right now and you go to the Git repo, and if you look in the description for this video, I have a link to the Git repo for this specific episode. And in there, you will see this file. So what is this file? It's called pb underscore schema.json. So this is if you are joining now and you don't have all the collections that you see I have here, these collections, you know, cart item, cards, item labels, stocks, supply, if you don't have that, well then you can just download this file, 
PB, pocket based schema that JSON. And then you go here to settings and then you go import collections. And then you can say load from JSON file, or you can just paste it. If you copy and paste it here, and then you can say review, and then you can actually save it. And it's going to create the same set of collections that I have. In my collection that I have, I do not include the user collection because that comes by default with pocket base, and you should have that. So how do you, did I create this? I go here, I say export collection. And notice by default, it wants to export everything. But I don't want it to recreate users because it's already there. So I just uncheck um, users. That's all. And then I said download it. I said download as JSON. And I put it in this file, in this repository for you to be able to start with. Note, however, that once you update the collection, you won't have the data. So you'll still need to prepare the data if you've seen us do before. All right. So don't want this video to be too long again, so let's get going. So that, that takes care of this. Now, like I said, we want to update the um, image within our items. So before we get to that, let's look at the images we have. So here I have some images. I said item one, I have image one, item one, image two. So you see I have two different images for item one, which is headphones. Um, I have uh, item two, which is a set of 10 pencils. Uh, item three, Lord of the Ring. Item four, um, dry erase marker. Item five, I have three images for item five. So how did I get them? Well, very easy. You go to Google or your favorite search engine, and I just search for those things in the, the description that we have. So I search it for the name of the description, so dry erase marker. I search for it, selected something, and then once I select something, I just right click and say, save image as, and give it whatever name you want in your project directory. Now, I will not be able to include the images I have downloaded in my Git repo because I do not own these images. and I don't want to have to worry about you know, copyright violations and all that stuff. So I'm not going to include it. You're going to see me use these images here today, but I'm not going to include them. All right. So now that you know how to get images, go ahead, get your set of images, get as many as you want for each item. That's up to you. Now let's talk about updating it. Now we need our .env file. So let's copy our um, that env file from episode five into episode six. Now go to your that env file, and the only thing you need to make sure is that your image name somehow match up with you know the name you're going to use here. So for example, in my that env file, I say Harry Potter is item one, and this is the value something in twenty nine kz. So if I go back to my UI, I can see yes, Harry Potter collection is um, 29kz. So if that is what I'm using, then I must make sure that image one then is, you know, item one, item two is iPod. So I had to rename mine because I had it wrong incorrect before, but that doesn't matter. Just make sure that so at least whatever um, ID you have here as your item one matches up with whatever your name and scheme is for your images. That's the important thing because we're going to use this ID, to then upload these images for that thing. So that's why you want to know. All right. So now we can go here. So what is this? This is our HTTP file. Now remember, our items collection is now open for anyone to upload. So we're using our base URL, and we can see up there what it's going to look like. It's going to be base URL, item slash record, and dot env, we're going to use. Well, we're going to use item one. So in this case, this is going to be Harry Potter for me. So if it's Harry Potter, then I need to upload the Harry Potter file. So there, we can do it from this file, or we can do it from the command line. I'm going to show you first from the command line, so it's clear for those who are not using this file. And then I'll show, come back and show you from this file. I'm going to come here. I'm going to do, let's do force HTTP. And we don't need to authenticate. 
So I'm going to say colon 80, 90 slash API collections. And we're dealing with our items. And so I'm not good. Well, let's leave minus V on. And so let's do this. And so we can see all of our collections here. And then if I want a specific Harry Potter one, if you remember I copied that ID, I can say this, and this is going to get that specific item for me, Harry Potter. Notice our images collection is empty. So I need to populate that. Okay, so how do I do it? Well, if we go back, when in doubt, always go to the documentation. If we go back here and we go to our API and we look at create, for example, it tells you, it says, if you want to upload things to this collection, you should use multi-part form data. And if you're using a file, so file upload is supported only via only via multi-part part form data. And there's a link here to the documentation. This documentation is only going to show you what this is like for using their um, like um, JavaScript and Dart client. But we're not using that. We're using, you know, HTTP REST. So our format is going to be slightly different. Um, it talks also about protected files and the um, thumbnails, but we're going to ignore all that bit and just go to how to do it because we don't have a lot of time. So now I want to upload a file. So since we want to update, we're going to use the patch method. And so that means I have to say patch here. But I also know that um, for HTTPIE, um, what it needs is to be told that it should do multi-part form upload. And so, as you know, with HTTPIE, uh, I messed up just now, um, you can specify the field and the value. So the field you want to upload is file, is images. And the value is going to be a file. So we do at and the file name. So in this case, it's going to be at, and then the file is item 1.1.jpg. That's the file we have. And then I'm going to use minus V just to be verbose. And then I do enter. And it doesn't like that. It's saying that our oh, invalid um, file fields, perhaps you meant minus minus form. And that is because if I'm trying to update, send a file, I have to tell it that oh, it should use multi-part you know, um, form data as the header. And I can have HTTP set that by saying that oh, I have minus minus form. And now if I do this, you can see that it does set um, the content type as multi-part form data. Now, you may see this rather confusing thing here, boundary equals blah, blah, blah. And I'll explain this in a bit. So let's just copy this and keep it. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to remember it. All right. So let's go to our collection now and see what happened. Now, before we do, notice that the return record includes the item one underscore one underscore and then some random data that JPEG. This is how um, Pocket Base always store every file. In that collection for the images, it's going to put the file name, but with some random data. And so even if you upload this exact same file again, it's going to be added to this collection with this, with you know, a different um, random um, value here. So we're not going to talk about updating the collection yet. We're just in terms of modifying or removing items. We're just going to talk about how do you update your items collection and add multiple images. So we see that how oh, you can do this from the command line, which HTTP IE. And let's just go verify this by going back here and going to our collection and then refresh and you can see there's our image and that's the thumbnail and remember i mentioned that our pocket base generate thumbnails for you that's a thumbnail and so if you're building a ui it can download thumbnails um, for your ui so that your application will be really fast without you having to download the entire image now that we've successfully updated our file through the command line let's go add to this same item another file of course if we could do it to one we can do it to the rest so let's see how we're going to do that so 
we go back here to our file. And if you look here, you see the same thing that I had from before, which was that value that I mentioned that I copied from the command line, which says multi part form data. If you remember the documentation from Pocket Beseto, you must use this when you're uploading files. So we need that. So what is this boundary thing then? Well, to understand what's really happening here, let me simplify this a bit. So I am going to leave this as my boundary value. And I know why I'm going to do that because when it was performed on the command line here, even though we had verbose, we didn't see exactly what was happening here, right? So all we saw is that it was using, you know, some boundary value. But in this example that I have, you see the boundary value being used. And I'm going to simplify it in a minute just to show you. But for now, let's just go with this. So the content type, content type is multi-part form data, semicolon, boundary equals blah. And then we use that boundary value. And I'll explain just now, content disposition, form data, and then the name of the field we want to update, which is images in our case. This is the um, field we want to update. And then the file name. In this case, it's going to be item one image two that JPEG. And let's put that here, item one image two dash JPEG. And let's just see if this works. And then if this works, then we can worry about explaining it. So let's do send. And you can see for images, it added our image two. So let's go back to the UI and make sure that we have image two. So we refresh and there is a second image. So that works. Now let's come back here and see if we can understand what's going on. I said that this boundary equals some value is a little bit confusing, but it's used as a way of separating um, the different things that you're going to submit in this multi-part form data. So why multi-part? Well, allow me to do this. Let me highlight this boundary value and I'm going to just going to change it to A, B, C, D, E, F. Now it could be anything. And notice by changing it to A, B, C, D, F, you can see clearly that when I set a value for the boundary, when I want to separate the different fields of data that I'm going to send in this multi-part form, what I have to do is say dash dash my boundary value. Then I use this to specify the data, um, this section to specify the data. And then I end the entire form by having, you know, enclosing my boundary value within double dash and then a double dash at the end. Does that make sense? So each field is separated by double dash and then the boundary value. And then the entire multi-form um, request is completed by having double dash the value and then double dash again. All right, let me see if I can help make this a little bit clearer with something else. Let's say we just don't want to update a new file. So this time we have three images for our reporter. So let's do that. Let's update the third one. This is going to be the third one. But let's say, for example, we want to change the price. So our collection here is $79.99. Let's say inflation, we want to make this $115.35. All right. So what we're going to do is remember what I said to separate each field, you can be dash dash and then your boundary data. And then you're going to say content disposition form data and the name of the field you want to update, which in this case is going to be price. So we're going to say price. Now, since it's a price and not a file, we don't need file name. So we'll take this out. And since we it's a price, we don't have a content type specifying what kind of image because you could update many images, right? Some could be PDF documents, some could be images, blah, 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 you know, JPEG or whatever. So um, we're going to remove this, but we do need a value for this field for price. So what did we say? 115 bucks and 35 cents. So there's the value. And then this now becomes that part for this particular field, the data for this particular field, which is the price. This becomes the, the part in this multi-part upload that is the data for this field images. 
and then you can keep adding more and then this is the terminating field or end of file so let's see if this is correct if this is correct when i pause this it should be successful and it was you can see the price was updated and now i have appended to that collection and so if i go back here and i refresh i should see my three thumbnail images and the new price selected now you could see the pattern here uploading the image for the other things are going to be just as easy and i'm going to do this instead and just copy this so we have multiple items so let's update item two and this is going to be item two remember my environmental file should have the correct id so that's what we're hoping for that's what we prepared it for us we're going to leave the same boundary we're not going to update the price for item two we're going to update the image so that's going to be 2-1 and then 2-1 and this should allow me to update this for item 2 and so let's send it and sure enough it updated it and let's go back here and we do a refresh and you can see my markers so I'm not going to go through the rest because they can be exactly the same thing rinse and repeat Hopefully you didn't have any problem with this and you learned something new. You're appreciating um, what Pocket Base can do. If you're still watching, thank you for sticking to the video. If you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Hope you like the content. For my returning subscribers, thank you so much for coming back and sticking with me. Appreciate it very much. Mikhail, thank you so much for being a Patreon subscriber. If you'd like to join Mikhail as a Patreon subscriber, here's some information on how you can do that. With that said, take care, stay safe, see you in the next video, bye.